Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is entrepreneur and Abraham Hicks fan, Louis D'Souza. This is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Indeed we are. Anne-Marie is going to uh, not be joining us this week. She's dealing with some personal stuff, but she'll be back next week, so we'll look forward to that. But we also have a special guest joining us today. He's known as the Hydrogen Man, and Greg is with a company called Holy Hydrogen, and he's going to give us uh, quite a background there. And Louie, I'm getting a bunch of uh, background noise from you. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's starting to filter down now, so that's a good thing, but all of a sudden the background noise just went kind of crazy. Yeah, I hear but, that too. Yeah. But, uh, Greg, yeah, I mean, when I first got word that uh, you were interested in being on the show and was interacting with your team and so forth, I have to admit, hydrogen was something I didn't know a lot about. I knew a little bit. I'd, I'd heard a bit in the press, um, but hydrogen specifically as a therapy, I really didn't know a, a lot about. So both Louis and I have been doing some reading up on it now. And uh, we're, we're a little bit educated at this point, but I'm sure you're going to give us a whole lot more education. But first of all, welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us today. And before oh, you even yeah. get into the hydrogen thing, tell us how you got involved in all of this. What brought you into this? Um, I was extremely sick. Um, I was really, really ill. The medical establishment did not have anything for me. Uh, I actually specialized and worked in the medical field for 20 years. And, you know, when you really see what's going on behind the scenes, you know, before I begin, I always like to say, you know, I'm not giving anybody any medical advice, you know, please consult your physicians and, and I'm not making any medical claims. But anyway, with that being said, um, yeah, I was just really ill and I got desperate. You know, I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't walk. My joints hurt so bad. I couldn't even hold a remote control to change the TV channel. And it, it was so depressing because I used to be really quite active, quite athletic. And just getting sick like that was um, was a heartbreaker. And then I started doing, I, I, I wanted to find a solution. And because doctors weren't offering any solutions, you know, doctors tend to offer a lot of like pain pills, anti-inflammatory pills, you know, just, just stuff like that, little band-aids. And, um, and that's kind of how it started. And I was looking at all data. I, I'm, um, I know you guys probably don't know my personality on this, but I'm really skeptical. Like I need to have data. I got to be able to have proof that something really is doing what it claims to do. You know, because if somebody tells me to put a crystal on my head and spin around 300 times, unless you show me some data, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have a hard time <laughs> swallowing that pill. You know what I mean? I understand. Um, so that's kind of how it happened. And then I started, I, I stumbled upon hydrogen. I started reading the data. And when I first read it, I thought it was a hoax. I thought there's no way there's anything that's this good. Um, and that's actually what I'm inhaling, obviously, right now. I'm inhaling just some pure hydrogen while we're just hanging out. And uh, and that's how it started. And I must have read the data for almost four years because I just wow. I thought it was I thought it was uh, a hoax. I didn't th I just could not accept the fact that this could be real and the doctors didn't know about it. And then after seeing that seeing where the studies were coming from, because that's what I started doing. I said, OK, this stuff sounds too good to be true. Where are these studies from? I thought I was going to find out that it was a hoax and somebody's putting out this garbage out there about hydrogen. Uh, turned out that it was obviously legitimate. Um, it was coming from top universities in Japan. I found um, the number one hospital in the world that not only researches, but they already use hydrogen. It's already been approved by the basically FDA, the Japanese version of their FDA. It's been approved. And, uh, and it's the real deal. Um, and the biggest struggle I actually had, I mean, I read about this stuff for years and that was tough. It's tough to read through all the scientific jargon. Um, but actually, the, the more difficult part was learning how to make it properly, understanding how to use it, what the proper levels are, and that there are many unsafe ways to make hydrogen that you should not consume. And a lot of um, there's a lot of companies out there, actually, that they use unsafe ways or devices. And that's actually how I stumbled upon Holy Hydrogen, because these guys were the most educated that I, you know, because I contacted a lot of companies and then looking into all the different ways of making hydrogen. These guys were just way above everybody. And then I found out that they were actually the number one hydrogen company in the world. It's a Japanese, the it's actually a Japanese company. And the Japanese are number one in the world in understanding hydrogen. And that's how it all kind of got started. And, and then I started using it. And then I saw the crazy results. I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. I mean, my father's always one of my favorite examples. We're talking high blood pressure, high cholesterol, borderline diabetic, 
He had glaucoma for 30 years and he had really bad arthritis. And all those things are now gone. No more pharmaceuticals needed, changed his life. He couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. My mother, who's like me, a big skeptic, she only really believes in mostly science. And, and she's a huge believer now after she saw what it did for my dad. And then she started using it. And uh, it's just been it's just been amazing. I can't believe that this exists and that the world doesn't know about it. I just mm. I still can't believe it. When, when you were first experiencing your own symptoms that you were dealing with, yeah. I mean, you were mentioning how the medical community really couldn't give you any answers. But did you have any thoughts about why it was happening to you, what you were experiencing? Had you had you well, kind of sussed anything out for yourself? Um, I didn't know why it was happening. Um, I've had my own theories. You know, I, I've I've done some pretty foolish things to my body when I was younger. Um, I didn't know if that's what was causing it. Nobody really knew, actually. Um, doctors well, but but what, what were some of your theories? I'm kind of curious to know what you were thinking. Well, it's a little embarrassing, but um, I mean, I was poisoned multiple times when I was younger. Ooh. Um, so I didn't know if that was something potentially that caused it. I was also under uh, an extreme amount of stress when I was really young. And, um, you know, again, it's embarrassing to say because I was, well, I guess I won't go into it too much. I'll just say that I, I was under a lot of stress at a very young age. And, and I just, I went through a lot and, you know, the, the, the stress, the science on stress, God, it's so bad for you. I mean, stress is so bad for you. And, um, and starting with the levels that I was starting with at the age of about eight years old, it, it was pretty dramatic. And I didn't know if that possibly affected me. Mm -hmm. Um, so just lots of theories. Um, I was put on some really terrible medications when I was young that, um, that could have potentially, I was way too young to be on them. The dosing of them was extremely high. Um, it was experimental, um, and they tried it on me and that could have potentially caused some damage that, that, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know what, what really was, you know, what really caused it in the end, but it was very painful. I mean, I couldn't walk, you know, pain, the pain was a level 10 like you couldn't go any higher as far as the pain and it was 24 7 and pain pills didn't work i i could take the most crazy pain pill they wanted to give me whether it was morphine or whether they wanted to put me on some of these opioids which i didn't like doing and it was like ruining my life i couldn't work i couldn't even think straight because the pain it just that's why hydrogen was like my salvation it it, it it's, it's changed my life and that's the reason that I'm willing to do like even shows like this, because obviously the company contacts me and says, hey, are you willing to do a show on it? I'm like, absolutely, because there, I'm, I really believe in the whole aspect of, you know, caring about people, you know, love your neighbors yourself, you know, like really caring about people. And they're never going to find out about this if somebody's not talking about it, you know, and if they go read the science and see that it's legitimate, because I've, I've had countless doctors and even scientists. In fact, before you guys called me, uh, I have a, there's a team of scientists and doctors who are doing research right now. And they're calling me for advice, actually, on how to use the hydrogen because they're doing hydrogen research. And, you know, it's, it's very legitimate. Once they see the data, all the studies that have already been done, they always call me back. Scientists, especially, and chemists, you know, I've had them call me back and they're like, oh, my gosh, this is real. I thought, I thought you were just talking about some something that was like foo-foo, tinfoil hat, not real. And like, this stuff is legitimate. I mean, we have tons of data. And I'm like, I know. That's why I'm trying to share it with people. Which is kind of interesting. I mean, I, I actually checked with the U.S. Uh, National Institutes of Health website, and they had data on it. They, they, the uh, U.S. government hasn't really come to a clear decision about it, but they acknowledged the data is out there. And that, to me, that was like, oh, whoa, that's really kind of a surprise. I didn't expect that. That's absolutely right. And, and in Japan, it was really hard for them to get it approved. It took years and it took a lot of scientists and doctors pushing it because the government kept saying no. They're like, no, this is no, we're not going to implement this. No. And they kept showing more and more data and more data. I mean, we're not talking hundreds of studies. We're talking into the thousands and we're talking about peer reviewed, like top notch studies. They're done the right way. And uh, and so, yeah, very legitimate. And then they finally approved it. So they approved it in Japan, and it's used in uh, 20 major hospitals, countless medical centers, and doctors' clinics. I mean, it's it's all over the place. They use a lot. They use it a lot for many different issues. And, and by the way, the the fact that you experienced all of these issues that you experienced growing up and and into your, your adult life is a theme that we have had here quite a few times on the show. Louis himself, he's been through all kinds of health issues, and he's explored all kinds of stuff and done a lot of really 
fabulous, unusual forms of self-healing and so forth. Um, but other people who have been guests on the show. So th- th- you're actually not out of the norm here. You're actually part of the norm <laughs> here on the show. You, you can feel normal. How about that? You know? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I, I have heard a lot. That was actually um, one of the things that saddened me a lot because when I was digging for answers and spending ridiculous amounts of money trying different things, you know, I found out that in this, the world of health, there is so much terrible information and products that are just they just take advantage of people. You know, they, they, there's so much stuff out there that isn't real. So you have to kind of decipher the, between the stuff that is real and the stuff that isn't. And it was tough. It was, it's been a tough thing to navigate. Um, but it's been a lot of years and, um, yeah, and I've, and I've been, and I've built really good protocols. In fact, that was one of the other reasons that, um, some doctors have contacted me because they've had patients, um, like the most recent one, there was a gentleman, uh, that has cancer in the lungs and I developed a cancer protocol and he didn't want to do it. And I, I was like, that's fine. Cause a friend of mine knows this guy. And he went with the chemotherapy, the conventional route. And not only did the cancer spread from his lungs to his brain, to his bones, to his skin, you could see lesions he had, he had on his skin. And then he came back and he said, okay, I'm willing to do your protocol. And I was thinking, well, geez, it's a little late because the doctor told him that he goes, you have three months to live. He said, that's it. We tried everything. It's not working. You're going to die. And then um, he jumped on my protocol. And now all of a sudden the doctors can't even detect his cancer. So it's, and all the lesions went away. So it seems to be working this protocol that I develop. And that's why I've had, you know, a lot of these doctors, cause I've been doing this for years, by the way, guys, this is not new. I've been doing this for a while. How, how I, many years I, are we talking? I don't know. Getting close to a decade. Okay. So, but, but I've definitely been refining my protocols. It's taken a while to almost kind of perfect it. And once I kind of got it really, really dialed in, uh, it started obviously working much better. And it started catching the attention of a lot of doctors. I mean, I have a UCLA scientist actually who's, who I'm in contact with. And, uh, yeah, I try to get some things going because, um, it's working, you know, and, and it's amazing. I, I still can't believe it. I never thought of myself as a health guru. I never thought that this is the, the route that my life would go. Um, I'm a little bit more of a car nut, to be honest. A car, <laughs> a car nut? Guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a car guy. I don't even know what I'm doing with, with the world of health and hydrogen. And, uh, well, and maybe so you're also going to develop a, a hydrogen fueled car. I mean, maybe you could just carry it to the next level. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there, th- those do exist, obviously. They do. And, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, and the Japanese, I mean, the Japanese are, they're amazing and they're doing such great research on hydrogen and nobody ever thought that you could use it for your health. Who would have thought that? Um, but it's actually uncovered a lot of things about how the body works. And I find it fascinating. I mean, if we took the hydrogen out of your body, You'd literally just drop dead. It, it's the oh, source sure. of all life. So um, it's very fascinating stuff. But we are talking about specifically molecular hydrogen. There is deuterium hydrogen. You know, there's tritium. And there's things that, like they, people call it Brown's gas or HHO. Those are not what the studies and the research are showing. It's definitely not the right type of hydrogen. In fact, I would caution people it can actually be harmful. Um, some of the research on deuterium is, is, it's not good for you, obviously. So you have to know what kind of hydrogen and what the research, you know, is showing. So you have to know what you're doing. <laughs> and and there say. are issues in the way that you generate hydrogen. I was, I didn't see it necessarily in, in the stuff that you were showing, but I saw some other videos, people talking about how you can accidentally generate chlorine gas. You can generate, uh, ozone. Yes. You can generate all kinds of stuff like that. Yes. Like, oh yeah. Okay. Well, I'll stay away from that stuff. Yes, you're absolutely right. And that was one of the reasons I was trying to develop my own device for a while. And I realized that not only am I not smart enough, um, I don't have the materials that were needed. And when I found the company that made the device that I'm actually using right now, I mean, these guys were as obsessed with it as I was. And they had all the backing of Japan. I mean, they literally had companies like Toyota and G-Shock and um, Yamaha. And all these companies came in to help this team of guys make this device because the guy who one of the guys involved in this had a daughter that was dying Mm. she had als she had lou gehrig's disease and he said look i want the best hydrogen machine that we can make for home use because i know it'll help my daughter and uh he did just that he didn't think about the money kind of like elon musk he's like i'm not gonna think about the money i just want to do what's right and do it the right way and the best way and and they did and now his daughter is like 12 years old and she's still alive doctor's Say it's an anomaly. She shouldn't even be alive right now. And um, it's just been nothing but amazing. 
It's many. It's amazing how many outliers there are in life. I mean, everything seems to be an outlier these days. It all has to be something that doesn't fit the norm for a medical uh, establishment, and it's another outlier. Yeah, and and all of a sudden the world is filling up with outliers. But this is this is a cool one. So tell us a little, a little bit more about the protocol, and tell us uh, about the, some of the different kinds of uh, diseases and situations and so forth that it's effective in. So as far as my protocol, I have multiple different protocols. I mean, my can you know, the cancer protocol is probably one of the more extreme ones. Um, the least, like the easiest protocol to follow, which is the one I put my dad on because my dad, I'll just tell you, it's almost embarrassing, but I'm, I'm going to share this with you guys. My dad was like, look, I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to change the way I eat. I'm not going to change the way I live my lifestyle. The only thing that I'm willing to do is to do this hydrogen thing. And I said, well, dad, it's got to be the hydrogen thing with clean water. So those, that's the easiest protocol. There's a device that you can get. You get it from a place called mypurewater.com. It's, all it is is a carbon distiller. It cleans water to just basically about as cleaner than anything you can get. Um, it works ex- way better than carbon filters. Carbon filters don't filter everything out. You'd be shocked what's in our water, by the way. You'd be absolutely shocked what's in well, our Louis water. Well, Louie wouldn't be. He's like a water fanatic, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, oh man. It, it's Honestly, it's killing us. I mean, have you heard of PFAS? And it's almost in everybody's water in America right now. And PFAS is highly, highly toxic, even at low levels. And it's in almost everybody's water. And we know it. It's We just don't talk about it much. Um, and that's just one of many things. I knew a guy who researched water, and he was research, he was testing well water, even ocean water, municipal water. And we were finding the craziest things in water. And um, when you do the carbon distiller, it takes all that stuff out. So you take the cleanest water possible, and then you put it into the hydrogen device and dissolve pure hydrogen you know, again, done the proper way. I won't go into the details of that because it's a little involved, but I can explain it if you'd like. And that's all I did for my dad. I said, dad, cleanest water, put it in the hydrogen machine and follow the hydrogen protocol, you know, that I that I developed for you. I put it out there. It's I, all my numbers are, uh, all my videos are numbered and it's video 337. And I gave it to the world for free. A lot of people thought I should sell it. Um, a lot of people have copied it. Everybody, you know, in the hydrogen world obviously copied my protocol because I developed that. And, and even research studies, have been done now on my protocol and uh, they found that it does things that that um, better than any other way of using hydrogen basically and uh, most of the stuff in Japan now they're using this this device um, in the labs and studies right now they're using this device for a research study because it's the best and it makes a difference the way you're using the hydrogen so yeah so you just do a proper protocol of using um, the best way to do it is doing water you dissolve the hydrogen into water and again clean water and then you can also inhale the hydrogen gas like I'm doing right now. And I discovered that using both of them is ideal. It does things that neither one of them do individually. The water will only do certain things. The gas will only do certain things. And together, they magically work synergistically. So that was a protocol I developed for my father. And it worked extremely well. And I, I, the reason I'm embarrassed is because I don't like to say that he he continued to do a lot of things, in my opinion, that were not good for him. And somehow it still worked. So that impressed me right there. Um, and uh, and it works on, gosh, if I were to tell you the things I've seen, I've seen it work on. I just had an email the other day about um, a lot of gut issues. So people who have issues with their gut. Um, hydrogen works extremely well. It's super good for the gut flora. Um, a lot of it even feeds off of hydrogen, puts off hydrogen. As you get older, you make less amounts of hydrogen. So it's important that you supplement it to keep your keep your body, you know, running on all cylinders. And as you probably well know, roughly 80% of your immune system is in your gut. And the connection between the brain and the gut is so important. And a lot of the things that the, the studies um, of hydrogen, they're, they're so fascinating because even the doctors and scientists, they can see that it does what it does, but they cannot figure out the full mechanism. And and it's really because it's it seems to be selective in nature. So it almost seems to do things selectively. So it's really hard to pinpoint exactly how it does it. But we know that it functions as a very impressive antioxidant and i say impressive because it's a selective antioxidant the size of the molecule is different i don't know if you know that uh, antioxidants come in different sizes i don't want to bore you guys with all this stuff but um but that you know we could talk about how it affects all different aspects of the body which is very vast but they use it for example i had a heart condition also i had a really bad heart condition and using hydrogen just made it go away my cardiologist couldn't believe it i was supposed to have open heart surgery wow and hydrogen just got rid of that. That wasn't the only one. There's a woman who, who tried my protocol. She had the same heart issue, went away also, never needed surgery. 
But let's zero uh, in on the word selective for a moment because I find that a very yeah. fascinating word. Give us like an, an example of two of, of that illustrates the selectivity you're talking about. Yeah, so selective antioxidants. So let's say you were to pump your body full of, you could choose an antioxidant. We could choose vitamin C. And you could pump your body full of vitamin C, and it's going to indiscriminately just antioxidize. Kind of like CoQ10 also. It'll just antioxidize. And that's not really what you want. A lot of people think, well, I just want to antioxidize everything. No, that's not how things work. In the human body, ultimately what you want is a really nice balance of oxidation and antioxidation. That's kind of the way the body works, and you want this really nice balance. The problem is is that when you go out of balance and you have too much oxidation, that's literally where a lot of issues start happening. Like, for example, that, that's where you get like a lot of inflammation, and we know that having inflammation is kind of almost like the first sign to certain diseases in, in medical conditions. And hydrogen will selectively go. So here's a good example. I remember seeing a study where they had somebody with – too low levels of uh, cholesterol and somebody with too high levels of cholesterol. They give them hydrogen and the guy with low levels, it comes up. The guy with high levels comes down. Hmm. So it brings, it, it selectively does things to bring your body back into balance. And that's what science has shown. And it's again, absolutely remarkable. So it's not just going to go and antioxidize everything. It'll do it selectively. And it seems to know what it's doing. That's the part that boggled my mind. You know, when I was reading the data about the third year, I started thinking this thing almost like, I didn't know how to, I, I almost, honestly, it's weird to say this, but I thought it looked almost like a, like an, like a, I called it a guardian angel because not only is it selecting things that help you, but I say guardian angel because it protects you. Like you don't even know. Like if you were to watch my video number eight, you should see, have you ever seen what chemotherapy does to cells? I try to avoid the subject actually, but I'll, I'll take, I'll assume it's not so nice. <laughs> yeah. So you get like 90% cell destruction with something like chemotherapy. It's really bad. It causes a lot of secondary side effects and things that you could just end up having to live with, with the, for the rest of your life when you undergo such treatment. When you use hydrogen and then let them hit you with something like chemotherapy, you have almost no cell destruction. It's like maybe 10% instead of 90. And so you could go through chemo, and I've known people to do this, and there's a lot of studies already on it in Japan. When you go through something like chemotherapy and you use hydrogen, it protects your cells so that you don't get all these secondary side effects. And your body not only recovers so much faster, but the cancer, here's where it gets weird. The cancer goes away what appears to be twice as fast. So if I were to give you some random examples here, like let's say a doctor would tell you, hey, you need 10 treatments of chemotherapy, Right. And of course, I'd be like, oh, crap, I'm, I'm scared because 10, 10 treatments or whatever. Well, and, and if you use the hydrogen with it, what we see is that within five treatments, so half the amount of treatments and the cancer is already gone. And so it seems to actually enhance. I have a theory of what it's doing, but I've known people like this. There was a lady with a tumor the size of a softball in her brain and half her body just didn't work. She couldn't. It was pushing up against the brain. She couldn't walk. Um, they told her that she was going to die. And somebody who knew me knew her and they were like, can you please talk to her? And I'm like, I don't know. This seems pretty dire because the doctors told her also that even if they did treatment, the chemotherapy and whatnot, that the tumor, the best they could do is keep it from growing anymore. That was it. They weren't thinking they'd shrink it. The best they could do was keeping it from growing. And she followed my protocol, but she still did the chemotherapy. And I said, look, if you're going to do the chemo, make sure to, to use your hydrogen. And I, and I walked her through a specific protocol that I would have done. And not only did her tumor completely go away, it went completely away faster than the doctors ever thought that it would. So again, it, it reduced the amount of chemotherapy even needed. And she was walking a mile and a half a day afterwards. She was just fine. And it was amazing. The doctors were blown away. And that's how I've had so many doctors contact me throughout the years because they see this and the patient tells them, hey, you know, I used hydrogen because they would ask them, did you do something? And that's how this whole thing got started. And I've been doing this, like I said, for almost a decade. You said that um, you, uh, let's see, how'd you say it? You, you said you had a theory. I think it's the word you used. You had a theory about why this works in the way that it does. What was, what's the theory? I'm curious. Well, my theory is that, okay, you, you, you've, you've heard the adage where they say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. So the theory that I've observed, it's kind of like lifting weights. You could lift something so hard that maybe like put a bunch of weight on your shoulders and it could break your legs or your back if it's too much. 
But if you put a certain amount of weight, it'll make you stronger, right? That's why mm -hmm. you're lifting weights, like gravity. Mm -hmm. Well, chemo and radiation, radiation is like almost like, it's a, almost like a type of light, right? Because you go out at the space and there's a lot of radiation. I don't know if you know the numbers, but if you go to the cosmos, for example, in outer space, in a 24 hour period, you're exposed to the same amount of radiation on planet Earth that would take six months. So in six mm -hmm. months, it's one day in outer space, roughly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what I've noticed is if the body, like let's say you're being bombarded with radiation or chemotherapy, and yeah, it's gonna kill the cancer, but it's weakening you, all your cells, it's destroying a lot of things. But if you bring in hydrogen, which is not just protective, it makes you stronger. And so being able to combat that, it brings out like a strength all of a sudden in the body that ordinarily couldn't be there. And that's why I think the body just is able to even I don't think it's the chemotherapy getting rid of the cancer completely. I don't think that's the only thing doing it. Because even the doctors have seen this, that you have a tumor and they're like, we're just going to try to keep it from growing more. All of a sudden, radiation with the hydrogen, and the, I think it activates the body and it just, it gets rid of it. And and it's just, and, and there's a lot of research about, you know, uh, hydrogen and cancer. I mean, I have a huge list here because there's so many. I mean, it, we know that it reduces the oxidative stress, which we know is a problem with cancer and actually almost all disease. About 97% of disease all comes down to oxidative stress. We know that hydrogen protects DNA. We've shown it actually reduced tumor growth. Um, we have shown also that it increases survival rates. I mean, I got this whole list here. Suppresses cancer cell growth. Um, it also helps, for some reason, cause uh, cell death of cancer cells. So that's quite interesting. Um, I like the one that it protects DNA because there's a lot of things that damage our DNA. The majority of pharmaceuticals out there um, are actually what they call genotoxic. So they're not very good for us. And that's another thing. If you're on pharmaceuticals, I would totally be on hydrogen. It'd be, in my opinion, almost foolish not to because of the way that it protects from a lot of the negative side effects and whatnot of pharmaceuticals. Um, hydrogen has also been shown to keep the cancer from spreading as much. So from metastasizing, so that's obviously something really, really positive. And yeah, it just goes on and on. It helps with uh, somatic mutations. It suppresses those two, and it just goes on and on. There's a lot of things that, that it has been shown. Uh, more specifically, though, the one I was talking about, which is it just protects you from radiation. But I don't think it just protects you. I think it's actually the radiation brings out something in the body if the body is strong enough. And that's where, you know, hydrogen comes in and it's a beautiful thing. I, I, I you know, it's kind of like oxygen, you know, oxygen is, you know, pretty awesome too, but hydrogen definitely blows it out of the water. It's, it, there's well, nothing like it. I'm reminded of high school chemistry. I mean, <laughs> anytime that we showed, they showed us, you know, some molecular form of, you know, some element in the body, sugars or, you know, whatever it might be, carbons, fat, carbohydrates, fats, anything. There were always three elements that showed up most often in the compounds. There was carbon, there was oxygen, and there was hydrogen. And hydrogen, yep. it, it, it seems like it's the, the poor sister. Everybody seems to leave that one out. But I remember it was in almost all yep. the molecules. <laughs> oh, no, you're, you're absolutely right. That's, that's exactly, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. It's the very first thing on the periodic table. And the things that it does in its pure form, you know, is, is what's remarkable. And I actually think that it, because it's so selective, I mean, everything is made up of hydrogen, basically, in the end. It always starts with hydrogen. And I think it kind of, the body seems to just, be able to use it in quite remarkable ways. Like for example, I knew a lady with diabetes and when she would use hydrogen, it would function like insulin in her body. So she was able to go off of insulin. We're talking about somebody whose pancreas didn't work. I mean, she, mm. she, she was type one diabetic and, it, and if any type one diabetic goes off of insulin, um, and I don't recommend doing this, obviously I'm not giving medical advice, but um, she was able to not take insulin for almost half a year using hydrogen wow. and her doctor didn't believe it and he monitored her monitored her regularly and after he saw what was happening he said where did you learn to do this he said this is mm -hmm. unbelievable do you know what this means just for the world of diabetes he goes do you know what this means you know and she's like why you know why are you so excited he said this is like nobel prize winning stuff like what are you doing she goes well there's this guy online who taught me how to use hydrogen this certain way and he's like what there's some guy online showing people how to do this he was like no way he, could, he didn't believe it he was like me you can't believe it it's too good to be true and uh, but you, anyway, so you were course, the guy online in this case that's what made it even more interesting <laughs> that was me she, yeah. she she she's like this guy showed me how to do this because she tried there's other methods of hydrogen in fact 
I mean, I could, I could show them to you here real quick if you want, but there was like, have you heard of hydrogen pills, for example? I have not. I didn't know that hydrogen oh, okay. so could even come in a pill. Well, that's the problem is hydrogen pills are lousy. They don't work. Um, oh, okay. That, that would explain it. <laughs> you know, well, you know, it's sad because there's doctors out there. Here's the hydrogen pills. Um, what they do is they use metallic magnesium and they cause a chemical reaction and they produce some hydrogen allegedly. And by the way, I'm, I'm going to be having, I'm going to be studying this stuff in the lab very soon because I don't even think it's doing very much what they claim, but people pay a lot of money for these. And I think it's just a money grab for a lot of these doctors out there, which is very, uh, to me, sad because you're not helping people. I tried them. They didn't work. I tried mm. these. They never worked for me. The lady who had the diabetes tried them, didn't work. So they just didn't work. And then they have these cheap little things like these guys. Have you ever seen these little hydrogen yeah. bottles? Mm -hmm. And the, these don't work either. I mean, I mean, th they can make some hydrogen, but the problem is the way they're doing it. You know, they do directly ionized water, which means this thing's going to leach metal into the water. Um, it's just completely the wrong way. And then people try to inhale the hydrogen from here. It's, it's completely the wrong way to use hydrogen. They're made in China. A lot of them are Korea, you know, Taiwan, but um, it's just not the right way to use the technology. Unfortunately, the technology costs more money than a cheap little bottle. <laughs> it's, mm. You know, it, it takes a little more expertise and technology, but, um, but it's worth it. And it's luckily not that expensive anymore. It used to be just for an inhalation device that did hydrogen safely. The very, one of the top ones, very first ones in Japan was about $11,000. And, uh, and that was actually cheap. They, they used to, you used to need a lab to get that quality of hydrogen. And now they developed this new one which makes high quality hydrogen water, which the other one didn't, and then the gas, and it's so much cheaper. They're under 2,500 bucks now, and they last super, super long time. I use it regularly, and you know, it's the best thing I've ever done for my health. That and clean water. So clean water and hydrogen are hands down the easiest thing anybody could do. L Louis has been sitting there very quietly absorbing, and uh, <laughs> th this is about the point I always like to ask him. So Louis, you got, got some questions for Greg here? I mean, I know you've been processing all this stuff and, and absorbing it into what you already know, but, but what you got? Uh, one of my main questions, Greg, would be when are you going to stop using it? Um, so the thing about hydrogen, my father actually went off of hydrogen for about, he did it by accident, but he went off of hydrogen for about four and a half months and he didn't have any issues. And then his arthritis started coming back again after about four and a half months because hydrogen is a lot like, it's a lot like a vitamin or a nutrient. Like, when are you going to stop eating, Louis? Never, brother. I mean, you're going to eat forever because you need the nutrients, you need the minerals, you need the vitamins, you need the calories, you know, and water. Who, who doesn't drink water? Or at least you should be drinking water. And you dissolve the hydrogen into the water. So it's, you know, you just consume hydrogen. As far as inhaling, I mean, you can do it. You don't necessarily have to. Um, I just do it like right now. I'm just sitting hanging out. So why not? It has very powerful anti-aging properties also. It's really good for you. So, you know, it's just something that you kind of implement into your lifestyle, a little bit like a good diet or exercise or like a vitamin, you know, something along those lines. But you can stop using it. But typically, uh, I wouldn't. But you can go without it for quite some time after you've gotten the results. And, not, you know, nothing should come back except after a while, you know, which obviously happened with my dad about four and a half months and his arthritic, arthritic pain started creeping in again. Does that answer your question or? Yeah, no, I just wanted to, to get an idea if you could ever be resilient enough, um, or not reliant on this anymore. Cause you, it'll get your body to a certain degree of health. Um, and then, you know, um, I'm very fond of the understanding of the yogis and how they handle their bodies and understand it and, uh, all the rest of it. And, um, I, have used yoga for many years and kept my body at um, a very high level of health with energy work, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, the idea of wandering around with any accessory, I mean, I don't wear watches, I don't wear anything. I have an annoyance without even having to wear glasses. I've improved my sight by more than half along the way, but you know, I, I just really don't like being reliant on anything outside myself um, very much, but I do process my own water to a fairly high degree, but it's more for a spiritual reason rather than to purify the water um, to to de to greater degree um, from a scientific maybe point of view. Um, I'm just curious, um, you know, as I say, I'm just very much one of those people who 
appreciates not having attachments, <laughs> especially up my nose well, you know, and otherwise. <laughs> you don't, I mean, you don't, you don't have to wear it. And, and it's not no, something attached to that. you. It's not a watch, by the way. It's just a device that's sitting on the counter and, you know. Yeah, I had a look at the You don't have to. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, it's funny that you brought up the spiritual aspect because I actually didn't, I didn't expect hydrogen to bring out, I didn't expect anything spiritual from it at all. And then I, I began to realize, I actually think that hydrogen might be the most spiritual molecule known to man. It's, Why is it's, that? it's not, I mean, not only the, the purest and it's part of, I mean, it's literally like the alpha and the omega, you know, it all starts with hydrogen, even, even the way that planet earth purifies water, by the way, where, I don't know. Do you know how planet earth purifies water? Yeah. Enlighten me. I'm curious. Yeah, it's really fascinating. It literally starts with hydrogen because it starts with the sun. So the sun is made up of almost entirely hydrogen mm -hmm. and it comes down to planet earth and hits the ocean and it heats up the ocean. And then the purity is what ascends because that's basically distillation right there. It leaves all the impurities behind. And that's why it comes down as either rain or snow. And rain or snow begins the movement, obviously, down the mountain, rivers and whatnot. This whole process that happens in our nature. And there's, I found really interesting verses. I'm very open to all sorts of scriptural verses. But obviously, I found some very interesting ones about the purity of, like, as pure as a driven snow, pure as white as snow. You know, all this purity about snow. And I realized that snow and rain are distilled water. I mean, that's what they are. And that's how I discovered by looking at many charts, you know, I realized one of the things I did when I was trying to heal was actually trying to purify my body. And I'm, by the way, I'm really into yoga also, stretching, meditating. I do a lot of that. And this has actually helped. Um, it's really weird how it does it. I can go into that, into the science of it. But it became something that was important to me. And this just kept, kept, helping me more and more and and the way that i purified my body i was shocked at some of the things i'm actually embarrassed to talk about them i usually don't go down that road because i stick to the science aspect just so that people can get help if they're sick but on a spiritual well, i'd aspect, be very happy it, if you uh, go down that route and remove the science i, I prefer hearing oh. people's personal experiences rather than all the proof and the data on the world because your own proof and data is valid I see. Well, um, okay. So what happened was this, you're going to see why this is embarrassing. Um, as I purified my body, I mean, I changed, I changed everything. It, th this whole aspect changed my life. And once I purified the body, I had something happen to me that was very, very, you could call it spiritual in nature. And mm -hmm. I literally still remember to this day, you know, I sat down to have a meal that was a very, very healthy meal after I had done a lot of fasting after I was going through, again, all these processes of, of cleansing my body or the temple or whatever you'd want to call it. And then I had almost like, uh, I had like an angelic being appear in front of me. And this, and that, it, it makes me sound crazy, which is why I don't like to talk about it. Not on this program. Um, You're safe luckily, on this program. <laughs> exactly. Really? Okay. Yeah. Oof, oof, okay. Cause I mean, I'm telling you, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I, I'm a logical guy. So these things start happening to me. This being, has started sharing massive amount of knowledge with me. And this is where I've gained a lot of my knowledge. This is how I've created these protocols. I've had help and I created these protocols and just seeing them work. I couldn't believe it. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. I thought there's no way that this, this is going to work. And, and it kind of, um, it helped me begin to decipher things. Like I started seeing the BS out there easily, just clearly easy. Um, especially in like, the world of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like supplements and the world of health. There's so much garbage out there. Even though there's good stuff out there, there's a lot of garbage out there. And somehow I was able to, again, decipher it. And, um, and this angelic kind of being, I mean, it did so many things. It showed me, like, if I were to give you an example, again, some of these weird examples. Do you know why, do you remember, maybe I should ask you, do you remember being in your mother's womb? when you were no. a baby? I would say most people don't, right? I mean, do you mm. even remember being six months old? Most of us don't remember when we were little or when we were a little baby inside our mother's womb. I never thought about it before. The reason I, re I thought about it was because this angelic being was sharing so much of this stuff with me. And what I realized was the reason you don't remember 
is because your brain wasn't fully developed yet. In your flesh, because you know, if you're into into some of the spiritual aspects, we can we can I think we can all agree that we have the flesh or what they call the ego, and then we have the spirit, right? And what's interesting about this is the spirit's obviously older. The flesh, very young, you know, you're, you're just born and you're just super young and, and probably foolish. <laughs> you are young and foolish, you know? <laughs> and this is why with time and age, you know, you get more wisdom. Well, what this angelic being was showing me was it took me back. So it would, it would give me visions and it would, and it would give me like communicate with me through emotions and beyond words. It rarely used words. And it took me to this moment when I was inside my mother, when I was, when I was a little baby. And when I was there, it was so fascinating because what I quickly realized was my spirit does remember being in my mother's womb. My flesh <laughs> doesn't. Mm -hmm. And when I, when, when he somehow, somehow this, this angelic being connected me to my spirit, and my spirit's like a library, just grab the book of each chapter or whatever. And it took me to this moment inside my mother. And, and I felt exactly, I remembered, it was more that I remembered. I remembered what I felt like in that moment. And I, and I realized something that was the most peaceful I've ever been. Mm. Being at my mother at the beginning of my life, I'd never been hurt yet. Nobody was yelling at me. I felt super warm. I was totally cuddled and, and at peace, I was safe and I was just in there and I didn't know no pain. I didn't know any of the things that would eventually happen in life. And that taught me the importance of peace. And I think there's a reason, like this is a, maybe a weird example, but I, I, I've, I've, I've talked to a few priests and people who are really religious at times because I realized something. I noticed that Jesus never went around saying, hey, God be with you. He never said that. Which is kind of ironic because when I said that to a to a priest one time, he, he he sat there and thought about it for about five seconds. He wanted to find a verse where he said that. He <laughs> couldn't find a verse where Jesus said, "God be with you." And then he starts asking me, like, "What's the point you're trying to make?" And I said, "Well, what did Jesus say?" He always said, "Peace be with you." Hmm. And now I understand why he said that. He said that because through peace, you will find God. Through peace, you will find yourself once again. You will find the source, you know, and ironically, inhaling hydrogen brings you to a more peaceful state. And I, and I won't go into the science because I know you don't like it, Louis, so I won't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Science, science is okay if it's simple and practical. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. Um, hydrogen is very simple and practical to use, but boy, is it complex to learn about and to make a device that does it properly. That is so complex, but using it is easy. Um, but yeah, ultimately, you know, Jesus saying, peace be with you. And I quickly realized when, when, even when Jesus would talk about being born again, I don't think people understood what that meant, but I think what he's talking about is he's saying being born again, because it's to go back to the original. And when I went back to the original in the, in the womb, I was at peace, you know, and children, for example, I mean, Jesus made comments about that all the time too. You must be like a child to enter the kingdom of God. And, 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 and when you're at this peaceful state, Everything changes. My vision changes. The way I see the world changes. My state of mind changes. And I began to value peace on a level that I never valued it before. So I, I changed the way I ate. I changed the water I drink. I didn't want to have things that would rob me of my peace. And hydrogen was a really good tool for that too. And just the purity. I realized how important purity was for the, for the flesh that it would eventually reflect onto the mind and your state of mind, because your body has a big impact on your state of mind, you mm -hmm. know? And I know this from experience. I mean, talking about experience, when I was at level 10 pain 24 seven, I'm a strong guy and I couldn't take it no more. I wanted to put a bullet in my head. I couldn't take the pain anymore. It was ruthless. I could not stand up. I couldn't walk. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't focus. Were you taking painkillers? No, because I, I tried and they didn't, not only did they not work, they literally wouldn't make the pain go away. Um, they made things worse because I would get really sick and I would shake, which made the pain worse. Any movement made the pain worse and I would sweat and I would get really pale and they, they just made me nauseous. They made me want to throw up. Um, I couldn't take pain pills. They just, I couldn't do it. And, um, mm -hmm. and so I had to find, I had to find a solution. You know, I had to find a way. 
and I, and I told myself, I made a prayer, another little personal tidbit. That's a, I don't know if it's embarrassing or not, but it is for me because I was laying on the couch, couldn't move so much pain. And then I made a prayer. I was like, you know, you know, when we're desperate, that's what we do, right? We pray. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, God, please help me find a way. And I promise you, and I made a promise. And when I make a promise, I meant it. I said, I promise that if you show me the way that I will share it with mm-hmm. people to help others. And then once I found that way, and once that spirit guided me, I mean, he guided me, he was showing me stuff every day for years. It was ridiculous. It was like a, I don't know, download constantly between one and three times a day, every day. And I built this library. How did it mind. come through? It's tough to, it's almost tough. It's almost like, um, gosh, it's tough to describe because it's not with words. Mm-hmm. It was almost like a weird type of an epiphany, but combined with, have you ever felt inspiration have you ever felt inspired Mm -hmm. that feeling would come with knowledge and inspiration and it would come together and i'm like what and then i and then i would have to go look for the science because i'm like no this can't be right no is this really real (laughs) like i felt crazy and so i would go look it up and sure enough i'd find the craziest stuff i'm like oh there's data here to support this stuff that nobody's heard about that's you know and so that's how i began to piece this pieces together and i created you know different protocols, like for different people and the success, the success is what's, is what's shocked me. It just absolutely has shocked me what, what I've seen possible with stuff that we have. I mean, this stuff is out there and the doctors either don't know about or, or success that doctors couldn't achieve with patients and paying so much money. I mean, so much money, you know, another example, I had a lady contact me who spent like $80,000 on different doctors and treatments for CFS, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. And she said it was ruining her life. She couldn't get up out of bed and walk around for more than two to three minutes. She couldn't function. Um, and I've, it was ruining uh, I've her life. I've seen some of those firsthand. It's uh, incredibly de- debilitating. And it's sad, right, Louis? I mean, th- this is what yeah. I mean. It's for me. Okay, this is another thing. I'll, I'll share something that the spirit taught me too, and it became very apparent to me. The spirit showed me my happiness because I wanted to be happy. Okay. That's all I wanted. I just, I just wanted to be happy. I wanted to be healthy. It's like, that's all I wanted. Am I asking for too much? You know, but that's what I wanted. And what the spirit showed me was it said, look, how can you truly be happy while your brothers and sisters are suffering? And I was like, what? And I started thinking about that. And I was like, oh my God, how can I be happy when the world is suffering? Because everybody's my brother and sister. People can disagree with me, but that's what I believe. I believe humanity we are, we are one, we are brothers and sisters, and I love them all. And when they do terrible things to each other, it makes me really sad. I mean, it really brings a lot of sadness. And when people withhold cures for the sake of money, like pharmaceutical companies, it kills me a little bit inside. It really, really bothers me, like a lot. And so when I found something that could help people, I want to share it. I want to help other people so that they can be happier. Because I believe that if People can reach better states of health and, and eventually reach better states of happiness. Well, that trickles down to everybody. If I'm in a good mood, I'm going to be nice to you, Louie. And if I'm not mm. in a good mood, I'm probably not going to be as kind to the people around, you know? And, and, your, and your biology does have an influence on that. If you're in a lot of pain, man, I know. It is. Huh, it's terrible. It's ruthless. My, it will my mother died of rheumatoid ruin. arthritis and uh, took her 20 years of painkillers and all the rest of it to, to kill her. But... It was horrendous to watch. <laughs> Absolutely horrendous. Well, you see there, Louis, you, you, you totally get it. And, and you know, with my father, my father was on um, a lot of nasty medications, but one specifically, and you've probably heard of it. You've heard of Meloxicam? Meloxicam I know nothing about any medication. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Meloxicam is, 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 you know, for pain and inflammation, but it's really bad for your liver. It just destroys your liver. And, um, and you can't be on it for very long because eventually, well, not only does it destroy your liver and, and whatnot, but you can't drink alcohol with it either. And my father is a wine connoisseur. He used to be a wine salesman and he loves wine. I mean, he's like, Hey, mm. I will die drinking wine. You know, I don't care. Um, and he was on that medication and I said, dad, you know, you do realize that if you drink wine while on that medication, you could literally just drop dead of a heart attack. And he was, he was like, he got mad at me. He said, never tell me again. He never wants to hear. He said, I'm going to enjoy my life. And that's what I'm going to do. And when I saw the data on hydrogen, I said, can you at least try hydrogen? 
And he was like, ah, you know, and I said, look, I'll pay for the device. I'll buy you the equipment. I'll pay for the water to clean the water, the machine to clean the water. I'll pay for these devices, set them up for you and show you how to use them. Are you willing to do that? And he said, okay, I'm willing to do it. And he did it and, and it took care of all the issues. Now he can drink, he drinks way too much wine, actually. <laughs> he just, he loves his wine, you know, but, but he stays on top of that. But that love of the wine is very healthy. You know, to some extent, right? <laughs> you know, um, a certain amount of wine is good. I think too much of yeah, probably with, most, within most moderation. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And my dad just, he goes a little over moderation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious but, about uh, something. But yeah, you're, so, uh, yeah. you're making reference to a lot of different uh, pain situations. Are there any pain situations where hydrogen is not e effective? Well, I'm sure there is because, um, you know, it's not a painkiller. So hydrogen is not a painkiller, but it has shown, again, back to the science, to, to function as an anti-inflammatory. And if you can get at the source of the pain, you know, because like let's say you have a broken leg and you inhale hydrogen or drink hydrogen water, it's not gonna make that pain go away. You got a broken leg, you know what I mean? You need some, some pretty major drugs for something like that. Um, but if you have inflammation for like, for example, arthritis, then, you know, I've seen it do amazing things. Clearly my father is, is one of my favorite examples. So, you know, it can help with a lot of it. I wouldn't say that it would get rid of all pain mm -hmm. out there. Does that That's kind of answer the question? Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's an honest answer. I mean, because, well, first of all, I kind of asked an unfair question, to be perfectly honest. I did. I mean, how <laughs> could you possibly know about all possible pain situations? But I had to throw it out there anyway, because I was, I was kind of curious to see what you'd say. So, yeah. No, I think your answer is yeah, right I'll, I'll be on. I'll, I'll always be honest with people. You know, I, the one another thing that bothers me, when, like, I've seen so many products out there, they promise you the world. You know, they're like, oh, this does everything, and it's going to fix everything. And, and it bothers me because it gives you false hope. And, mm. God, I hate false hope because I've had false hope too many times, and I hate it. It's like, just tell me the truth. Tell me if this will just help me to this much or this much or, you know, just tell me the truth. And then I don't have to have false hope and, uh, and get upset later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Greg, I, uh, I, I stumbled across something called, uh, Jinshin Jutsu. It's an energy, energy method that, um, you use. It's an art, really. Um, and it was incredibly effective and still is. And I've used it for the last 20 years. Um, and yeah, like you, I just wanted to tell everybody about it because it is so effective and so, <laughs> um, you know, one, one thing, it, all you needed was a bit of knowledge, and after that, you needed nothing. You didn't have to buy a device. You didn't need anything. And uh, it's just been brilliant. You know, we've had talks on the show, we've brought people on, um, et cetera. And, you know, it's just it's just really, really incredible. And I fully understand that idea of really wanting to share what you found um, along the way. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a strong design. Also, the point you brought up about, you know, if one person is unhappy on the planet, you know, that how, how can you be happy? It's, it's a very valid point. Um, a lot of us uh, just are focused on our own environment and, you know, as long as I'm okay, you know, it's fine, Jack. And, uh, it, you know, once you start seeing the whole planet or, or yourself as being part of everything, um, it doesn't really make as much sense, but once you really start, cause I'm very big into soil at the moment, um, saving soil and, uh, the whole movement. And, you know, that's the one thing that can help heal almost everything on the planet. Um, when it comes to ecological disasters, et cetera, which of course affects us humans in so many different ways. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all, we're all linked together. Like one of the things we like saying in, in, is that if all the insects died, humans would die in 20 years. If all the worms died, all the humans would die in five years. If all the humans died, the world would thrive. <laughs> all the humans died. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, on, a, on another, are you talking, when you're talking about um, soil, this is, I think maybe this is a little bit on the spiritual front, but it also has a lot of science. Because mm -hmm. I think hydrogen is going to change the world. Um, when I heard about the age of Aquarius, never thought about much, but again, that angelic spirit gave me so much and it showed me what this showed me about the age of Aquarius. And it said, look, mm -hmm. the age of Aquarius is about a knowledge of water and this knowledge will change the world as we know it. And water is obviously primarily made of hydrogen. And 
what the spirit was really showing me was hydrogen's going to change the world. You should see what it does agriculturally, Louis. It's unbelievable what it does for the soil and for the plants. Give, give, a, give us an idea. I'm really interested. Yeah. So I knew some guys. So there's these people who grow cannabis. You know, they have a business. It's legal and whatever. And they knew that I was using hydrogen. In Japan, they've already shun, shown that agriculturally, what it can do basically is make the plants grow faster with mm -hmm. less water. And mm -hmm. not only that, but the nutritional aspect of the fruit or vegetable, it's going to go off the charts. It, 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 so, it, so is this is this administered through water, or is it right. administered yes, any other way? Two ways. Yeah, because you mentioned um, the two ways in a human. So. Yes, yeah, and in humans, they also do an IV in Japan. You can do a hydrogen IV, but it's not as effective as the gas in the water, so it's kind of no need. Um, okay. But. And, and you can do, um, this is another one that is much more expensive though, is hydrogen baths, you know, being underwater. Um, but that takes the right type of equipment, very expensive, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You, you know, that's all, that's just unreachable. Th this is something that's reachable in your home. Like it's like a water filter. You know, you have a water filter that cleans water. You got a machine that makes, puts hydrogen in your water. But yeah, agriculturally, it's going to change the world in the very near future. Um, I also believe it's going to change the world of energy. So it's, it's going to provide us clean energy in the future. Hydrogen is going to be, it's going to be hydrogen and electricity. That's going to be the way of the future, in my opinion, and what I was shown. And, um, and it's also going to change the world of medicine. Um, in fact, that's one of the, that's one of my biggest issues right now. I'll just give you a little snip, a little snip of this information because I'm, there's certain legal contracts and I'm not supposed to talk about it too much. But, um, basically there's a device that I had a vision of that was shown to me. And this device apparently would be able to heal almost any disease and also make you extremely young. So it could take somebody who's 60 years old and make them like 20 years old again. Um, but we're talking and, and, it, and it involves it's not the only thing, but it involves hy hydrogen is like at the core of it all. Without hydrogen, it just won't work. Kind of like the sun and water. You know, without the sun, we, we're dead. We're dead here on planet Earth without the sun and without water. We're dead, too. Um, so, you know, but this device would cost millions of dollars. The biggest problem is getting the funding and, um, and getting the right people behind it. So that's the thing that I'm, that I'm kind of working on, but I'm afraid that that's going to be a while from now. So this is the most realistic thing we have, you know, at this time, but that's what I think is going to change the world. And that's what the age of Aquarius is all about. Even, even down to, um, you guys into the pyramid of Giza at all. Do you know much about the pyramids? <laughs> Not hugely, no. Well, this may surprise you. Do you know what's underneath the pyramid? It's all right. We already know this. It's not a guessing anymore. We, we know for a fact. Do you know what's underneath the pyramid? Nope. A river of water. Now, here's the thing. I don't think it was an accident that they built this thing right over a river. Do you know mm -hmm. why they built it over a river? Because that gives you access. See, if you got water, again, knowledge of water, Aquarius, if you have water underneath this pyramid, and it was capped by what? Supposedly it was capped by gold, right? One of the number one conductors of electricity. Somehow, if they were able to get that electricity to the water, you can extract hydrogen. And, and with hydrogen, you could even create like an environment. So that's why I think it went from being a lush green to just a desert. Because mm -hmm. hydrogen is the source of all life, my friend. It is the source of all life. In fact, if you were to watch, I got a video 68 where they take again this device and they gave this woman water and they did a live blood analysis and then they gave her the hydrogen water from this device. You should see what happened to the blood, the amount of life. And it's clearly visible. It's not something that you're like guessing. It's so dramatic. I had actually a doctor contact me who saw that video, really nice lady. And she said, look, I think that's a hoax. And I was like, well, I know it's pretty outrageous, but it's real. And she said, were you in the lab when they did that study? And I said, well, no. Then how can you believe them? And I'm like, well, you know, the Japanese are, are, are pretty honorable people. And these studies have been, they're, they're legitimate studies. And she said, look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm willing to buy one of the machines, take it to one of my labs. You give me the information about the exact way they did this test. And I will do the exact same test. And if the results don't come out the same, are you willing to go out and make a video and tell everybody that you were wrong and that this was a hoax? And I said, absolutely, because I want the truth. Hmm. And she did it, and she got back to me, and she said, I can't believe it. The results were exactly the same. She said, I can't believe that hydrogen is doing this. <laughs> she became a huge proponent of hydrogen. And you should see what it did for a 95-year-old mother. It was unbelievable. So it's, 
it's a very fascinating technology and it's literally all around us. It's the most abundant thing in the universe. In fact, the universe is made up of almost primarily hydrogen. This is true. So it's yeah. everywhere. It's just a matter of how, it's just a matter of how to get it. That's literally, you need a certain level of technology to get it without byproducts. Like there's people making hydrogen using lye. Oh my gosh, that's so foolish. Lye is one of the most toxic chemicals known to man. You know, but if you do it properly, and this Japanese company, they apparently invested millions of dollars and they had some really knowledgeable people and they had first time one-off technologies that were never being used or even developed. And they did this and I was, I'm just grateful that it exists because if it wasn't for this, I wouldn't know where to go for hydrogen. It, it, it would not be easy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so, grateful so that we had- clear. Mm, go ahead. So, yeah. so to be clear, your machine takes H2O water and turns it, um, separates the oxygen and the hydrogen and you use the hydrogen part. What does it do with the oxygen part? Yes, and part? it does it in a very, it just off gases. Off gases. Okay. Yeah. Just having a little, because I, just having I a little went oxygen. to, I went to as a kid to, um, an integrated circuit factory and they had huge machines that separated water and hydrogen, huge tanks. Um, wow. because they needed pure water to make the, the computer chips that you have in your computer. Um, yep. which I didn't realize or understand, but, uh, I thought that was really interesting that it can be done on that massive scale. They literally took water and separated the two. So your machine does something similar and it, and it uses the hydrogen aspect. Um, how um, much water do you need? Similar. To, how much water do you need to kind of make enough hydrogen to breathe for a day? So the device makes 1.5 liters. Um, it can make half a liter also. 1.5 liters of what? Uh, water. Okay. So you, so you get one point, you get 1.5 liters. So, so your bottom. machine is a water filter as well as a hydrogen maker. No, 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 no. So you so can this take is, tap water and put it in there. Th this is, this is really important to differentiate. And I think it's actually, um, it's really cool. So here's the way it works. So the device, you can put any kind of water you want in it. You can put, you know, distilled water, reverse osmosis water, spring water. You can put tap water if you want, though I wouldn't recommend it, but I mean, you could do that. The only water you don't want to put in the machine would be salt water from like the ocean or something, you okay. know, and, and you're going to want clean water. The machine works best when you have clean water and the machine has two chambers and you really want two chambers because the reason that the Japanese did this, so everything they did was for a purpose. You don't actually want to drink ionized water. You don't want to drink electrolyzed water. The Japanese discovered it's very interesting. Um, because when you directly electrolyze water, it produces other gases. That's okay. one problem. And the other problem is, you know, a lot of times when, you, when you're when you ionizing water, it changes the pH of water also. And have you ever heard about all that alkaline water stuff, like the Kangen devices and stuff? You've heard of this before? Mm. And what they found in Japan is that those are a problem. They're a problem because when you ionize water, and especially when you make it alkaline, it disrupts your stomach acids and your stomach acids are there for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, and when you start messing with those after using that water for six to eight months, it begins to cause issues with the GI. And that's what they noticed with those Kangen devices and a lot of water ionizers and Japan just did away with them. And in America, we're about 10 to 15 years behind Japan. So we're still, people are still selling them. People are still buying them and, and they're not good for you. They're actually bad for you. Hydrogen is pH neutral. So it pretty much won't change the pH of your water. And so as long as you dissolve pure hydrogen into the water, it's totally fine. As long as you do it properly is the biggest key. So they have two chambers. One chamber does what you're talking about. It extracts the hydrogen, lets all the other gases go. And it's got a special membrane that it goes through and only dissolves pure hydrogen gas. And that's it. And that's, the, that's actually one of the reasons this is a device. This is the number one used device in the medical clinics and medical centers in Japan. The only thing that they do besides this device is they have special hydrogen tanks for inhalation because you can, you know, if you're in an ambulance, for example, I don't know if you know, this is really fascinating. This, this, this actually shows you how this is the molecule of life. So if you have a stroke, so by the way, it's approved for strokes. They use it for strokes in Japan. If you have a stroke, and let's say you're not getting proper blood supply to part of the brain. Well, if you don't get proper blood supply to this part, to a part of the brain, that part is going to die, right? And this is why people's faces droop and part of their body mm. doesn't work, okay? Well, with hydrogen, 
if you put someone on hydrogen inhalation, this is what they do in Japan, ambulance arrives, immediately puts you on hydrogen gas inhalation, has a tank of hydrogen, starts opening up the valve, getting hydrogen in you. That part of your brain that isn't getting blood will stay alive. Now that's fascinating, all right, because there's a really interesting verse in scripture that says life is in the blood. Well, you know what? Hydrogen's in the blood. <laughs> this, is, this is what life is. Life is in the blood. And of course, there's a lot of other nutrients and great things in blood. So if you get hydrogen to that part of the brain, it'll keep that part of the brain alive. And when they finally get to a hospital, restore blood flow, they have almost 100% success rate. So almost everybody makes a full recovery after having a stroke, which is amazing because that's not normally the case. And that just shows you how amazing this molecule is, you know, for life, whether it's for plants, mm -hmm. soils, um, even your gut flora. And as you know, soils have like a type of flora, you know, and yeah, hydrogen absolutely. is good for it too. So it, it, it's like, it's like that secret ingredient in everything. It's kind of like water. Cause I mean, water is primarily hydrogen actually. And, um, and, and you need water for, you know, making, I mean, you need it for almost everything. <laughs> mm. oh, it's like, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. As you could probably tell, I, I get pretty excited. No, absolutely. <laughs> I can definitely tell that. No problem. <laughs> but I think, Walt, uh, we've gone over an hour there. Yeah, we're about six minutes over, but that's okay. This is a good segment to leave in, so that's why I didn't interrupt. This is important. But there's something else that's also important before we part company. You got to tell people more about how to find you because you have your own YouTube channel. You got to tell people how to find the company you work with, how to find the products and so forth. Fill them all in on all that good stuff. So if you want to learn more about hydrogen, you can go to my YouTube channel. It's Uprising144K. That's the name of the channel. Everything I put out there is free, so you can subscribe for free. I don't do any of these things where people pay to get secret videos. I give it for free, all of it. So it's all there. Um, as far as wanting to find this device, which is literally the best device out there, whatever the best is, that's what I'm gonna share with people. So I don't have, I don't go for the money. I've had a lot of companies offer me a lot of money for promoting their devices. I won't do it. I'll only do what the best is, and that's holyhydrogen.com. So they're the, they're the official company that carries this device. And it's called the 2021 Lourdes Hydrofix Premium. And they have a ton of the science there. If people want to geek out on the science, they have all the articles there also. And they got a lot of other great videos. And then if people want to email me for some crazy reason, sometimes people do, or, you know, they want to make, I do sometimes do individual consults, like people who are really sick or people who had cancer, because there's a lot of education and people contact me. My email's uprising144k at gmail.com. Or sometimes people want me to do shows like this too, or do interviews and they can contact me at that email too. And, and that's about it. That's what I can share. You, you, well, also you tell me about the name uprising oh. one, four, four K. Where does that come from? Um, so obviously, uh, I created that because for many reasons. Oh, and there was one more I forgot. Um, if you want to get the cleanest water, mypurewater.com. Um, oh yeah, I have a discount code there. If they, if people want a discount, I don't care if they don't use my code, but if they want to, it's the code is uprising one, four, four K also. And then I have a discount code also on holyhydrogen.com, which is all capital letters, Uprising 144K. And as far as the name, I chose it because Uprising, like almost like Uprising from Amongst the Dead, um, it, it kind of comes from uh, some interesting biblical uh, scriptures, like 144K comes from the 144,000, if you ever read about the 144,000, which was the 12 tribes of 12,000. Um, you know, some of the last survivors of the people who made it through the apocalypse. And um, I named them that because I thought, man, if there ever is an apocalypse. And this was years ago. I mean, I named this channel years ago. And then all of a sudden we had, you know, COVID come through and these different things that are happening and food prices are going crazy. And a lot of the stuff that's kind of biblical in proportions and it could get worse. But if we ever have something like, uh, you know, issues with our ozone layer, all these different things that can happen. Hydrogen is so protective that I literally just envisioned that anybody who's going to survive it is going to be on hydrogen. And, and so that's why I named it uprising, you know, rising up also, you know, when you're sick and you kind of feel like you're dying inside it, you know, you rise up again and the last survivors are the strongest survivors and it's kind of spiritual in nature. So that's why I named it okay, uprising one, four, four. And plus hydrogen rises up by the way. I don't know if True. you knew that, but Hell yeah. it uprises yeah. also. So it's got a lot of double, triple meanings in there. That's cool. Hey, well, the most important thing is that it's meaningful to you 
because you're the one it who's is. who's working under that that name. But it's, it, I always think it's interesting to know how people come up with names that they apply to themselves or their products or whatever, because there's usually a history, and you gave a cool one. So thank you for that. And thank you for taking the time to share all this with us. I mean, we, we really do appreciate it, and I'm sure there are listeners who are appreciating it as well. There are undoubtedly some who are going to be checking out the website. So all I can say is thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for sharing what you do. Thank you for continuing to do it because I can tell you're going to be doing it probably the rest of your life. So, you know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I'm actually, th- I mean, I want to take, um, there, there, I want to take, I mean, you might call it a sabbatical, but there's some things that I want to do and I, and I do want to go to Japan. And if I can help to dev- continue to develop these technologies to continue to help people. And like I said, this anti aging yeah. device, though hydrogen already has an anti aging aspect to it. I didn't talk about that, but, um, if you ever want to do another interview, there's still more information to share. But yeah, this one, it's all been over an hour or so. <laughs> well, actually, you did make reference to the anti-aging part. You talked about the 95-year-old woman and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, you did make reference. So you didn't miss it. You just kind of well, you know, went I over quickly. Let's put it that way. I didn't give you the numbers. You should see the numbers. But um, like, there's some interesting actual scientific data that, that is pretty remarkable. Okay, well, if you're going to tease us like that, you can't just leave it hanging. Yep. You actually have to give us the numbers. So okay, now you gotta, I'll, I'll, see, see, you just ruined it right there. You got to give us the numbers. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll try to be really brief. So in Japan, what they do is they can take your blood and they can literally tell you roughly what the age of your blood is, which literally usually tells you roughly what age you are. Mm-hmm. And so they took this gentleman and they took his blood. He was part of this study that they did, and they said, change nothing in your lifestyle. Eat the way you eat exercise or don't exercise, just live the way you normally live. The only thing we want you to do is drink hydrogen water with proper levels and made properly, of course, cleanly. And so he started using that hydrogen for every single day for a whole year. And then they took his blood again one year later and they measured the age of it and the blood was five years younger. So cool. they, it's a very powerful anti-aging and they use it a lot for the skin and they, they use it for a lot of aspects um, in Japan, you know. And I'm 80 years old, so, you know, if I look young. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, this has been great, though. We really do appreciate you taking the time to share all this really cool information. And, and by the way, I, you would call it taking a sabbatical. I call that taking your next step in the continuation of your life story. I think, I think that's just part of what you're doing. So when I was thanking you for what you're doing, I'm thanking you for that too. You, you are continuing to explore. You're continuing to expand your knowledge. That's all anyone can ever ask for. So I appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much. You guys were great. And I, I really, it was, it was fun hanging out with you guys. I hope, I hope we can do it again sometime if you guys are up for it. No, yeah, it sounds great. We really like that. So thank you, Greg, very much. Thank you, Louis, as Absolutely. usual, all the insightful questions. Thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.